Hi, welcome to Talking About. I'm John Griffith. And I'm JC Alvarez. Thanks for joining us this evening. And we have a very special guest today, uh, Greg Fox, uh, creator, author, artist of That's Kyle's me. Bed and Breakfast. <laughs> uh, so yep. Second volume now available, which is part of what we're going to be talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> I'm glad it's finally out. I know some people were waiting for a while. It's is, is this like a, a, a contained volume of uh, Kyle's Bed and Breakfast Adventures? Yeah, it's a collection because the comic strip is syndicated. It runs every two weeks. So this is a collection of about four years worth of this strip. And then it's, um, it kind of takes up where the fir first book left off. So it's uh, so the first book is out there and available. Yeah, it's out there well. also. And uh, although I'm actually, this is going to be a reprint, but um, that's probably not going to be for a few more months. So this is like the one that people this, have been waiting for. This is the for. hot one right now. This is the hot <laughs> one. <laughs> it's hot off the press. <laughs> Careful, don't and, burn yourself. <laughs> and someone here is wearing very little clothing. <laughs> Yeah, this, isn't, this isn't your, this isn't yeah. your mother's uh, Batman and Superman comic, is it? Well, not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So but tell, tell us a little bit about Kyle's Bed and Breakfast Adventures. Well, it's about a bed and breakfast in the suburbs. It <laughs> happens to have a gay male clientele, although, although there's some lesbians stop by also, and, and straight people too. Everyone's welcome there. But Everyone. It just happens to be gay people seem to okay. magnetize towards this place, and it's... Uh, and people tend to, I don't know, speak their mind. That's the thing. Okay. <laughs> In this sort comic strip, people... Yeah, we, yeah, have they, a, we have a frame right there. <laughs> they tend to <laughs> speak without thinking first, which is, I'm sure, a lot of, you know, gets people into trouble, but I guess the readers tend to like that a lot. So it's, it's a good thing. It's like one of the hidden lessons in Kyle's Ben Breakfasts. You should probably think before you speak, but uh, <laughs> these characters don't tend to do that. Well, they just say who, what's who on their mind. Who are some of the people that we meet in the book? Uh, well, Kyle is the main character. I mean, he's the owner of the place, so he's more of, like, the center of it. He... Is he pouring the cereal? Yeah, he's the one pouring the cereal. And, uh, <laughs> that's the one that I would want to date. <laughs> oh, okay. He's the but I would end kind up of the stable with one. this one. <laughs> well, he's kind of the closety kind of. I mean, he's, he's out he's with his... He's in his underwear, mm. Greg. <laughs> well, I mean, he has issues, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's compensating for he something. He doesn't have clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's... Uh, well. So these are the folks that gather at Kyle's Bed and Breakfast. And uh, how long have, has, have you been working on this strip? It's been running since 1998, believe it or not. Wow. Um, and it started in Genre Mag. I don't remember Genre sure, Magazine. Yeah, yeah. They actually ran it for a few. They, don't, they didn't normally run comics in there, but they liked this. So they, they said, could we just run a few episodes? And it was a really good thing because it got it exposed to the, the to country. The so then that's when I started syndicating it. So now it's running in a bunch of papers across the country. Although, unfortunately, the gay and lesbian press is not really at a high point right now. <laughs> so more people, I think, read it online now, because mm. um, it's in about 12 papers across the country. But it's, uh, there's been a lot of papers that have gone out of business, like the Chicago Free Press is gone. And it was in the New York Blade until that went out. Although it is in the New York area, it's running on Long Island, in Outlook, Long Island. And it's running uh, in New Jersey, in, out in Jersey, the Jersey papers. What inspired you to, to take yeah. on a, a series of comic strips where the characters are, are you know, the main strip characters are, are gay? Well, I had been drawing sort of more mainstream stuff, and it was, uh, I don't know how to put it, not frustrating, but it was just, I was starting to notice more and more as I was doing it, there were like no gay characters at all. And I wanted to tell my stories and the stories of people I knew and, and the things I would see even on TV. Like, I mean, it's, this is almost like the TV show I wish that was on TV. <laughs> right. I, I wasn't seeing the characters that I knew, the people that, you know, were more of just not the stereotypes. Mm. I mean, some of them, you know, can have stereotypical qualities, but I like to see a diverse range of People, different personalities, different gay men going through their lives and having an ongoing thing because you didn't, I mean there are gay movies you see more and but you kind of just get to know those characters and they're gone but this is the kind of thing people can follow every episode, this, it's an ongoing story and I wanted to just do that so I, I figured I should just do it. And it's, the gay, it's the gay peanuts. Yeah, well, <laughs> not exactly, but yeah, <laughs> thank you. It's the Peanuts gang grew up, and yeah. they're all a bunch of Moes. Yeah, yeah, maybe the more grown up. Although it's not, it's not a. I know some people think it's like, oh my God, it's like an adult. Look, it's, comic. it's, it's, yeah, it's, well, yeah. it's a day at the gym. Yeah. <laughs> well, what what I really appreciated, I, I mean, as a comic book fan, and I grew up, you know, following, you know, John as well. I mean, it's like, you know, everyone yeah. everyone identifies with with the comics that Marvel and DC have put out for years. Yeah. But like, like to your point, I mean, you started this in 1998, you said. Yes, right. And uh, at that time, there really weren't that many mainstream gay characters in those, those, those mainstream comic book right. publications. Right. I mean, there still aren't really, but it's changed now. But it's still, I mean, it's like this sort of 
hot button topic still mm. of like a in Marvel and DC. Although even Archie comics now has yeah. a yeah. gay character, which yeah. I and think is great. And it's the I think it's their top selling. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like. I don't know, people are probably just like, I think some people probably pick it up thinking, oh, this Kevin, that looks cute. Provide for their, <laughs> ki their kid, they don't realize what it is. So I don't know, we'll see how that, that goes. How much of Kyle's bed and breakfast is reflective of your own life? Um, As I turn to page 101. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I have put a lot of, because a lot of this is about relationships and the you know, crazy situation does go on. So it's sort of, a, I guess, an amplified version yeah. <laughs> it's of my life. It's, it's, not a, it's a comic book version of... Yeah, of I book. haven't been in a lot of the real insane situations that go on in here, but there is certainly I've had relationship experience that is reflected in these stories. <laughs> and, um, okay. It almost can't not be in there because usually I'm writing about whatever's going on in my life. But at the same time, sometimes I write things where I'm like, this, I would never be involved in this situation <laughs> that these characters are in, but I just feel the need to write about it because it's, <laughs> it's too crazy well, not to. Uh, the, where did the initial inspiration for the setting and the main character come from? Believe it or not, it came when I was, because I used to draw more mainstream comic, mm -hmm. I was working in comic books and I did superhero stuff, and for a while I was doing a baseball uh, biography comic. Okay. For about a year I did these. <laughs> And it was so, it was the most boring comic book in the world. I mean, I didn't write the scripts. It was really just the, like, biography of a baseball player each issue. Where you would just read this. It was so dull. And so just to keep myself from going crazy, I started writing a comic strip about a gay baseball player. Because I thought, well, that mm. would be interesting. Because there's nothing oh. gay in baseball. And this is before the... the You've the obviously board. not dated a baseball player. Well, yeah. <laughs> not yet. Uh, but, I, <laughs> no, um, but we're working on it. Yeah, it's, it's in process. Uh, um, actually, Take Me Out, that was the, it was before yeah, that, yeah. before even that baseball player Billy Bean was a, yes. Yes. Was before he came out. So there was like no gay baseball anything. And so for me, it was this whole untapped field. I was started writing about this gay baseball player and I wanted to give him some friends and a living situation. So I sort of built a house around him and then it just became about the characters. So I didn't really do anything with with this for a few years because I was still trying to get into like DC and Marvel mm -hmm. comics and um, but I started realizing this is the best stuff I've ever written it's so and it almost like just had a life of its own I had to put it out there and once I did start putting it out there like genre magazine like I said yeah. immediately picked it up and wanted to just run it and just it kind of just took on a life of its own so I uh, the, had to the, go with it. The style of them is, is reminiscent of course of in gay culture it, it looks very reminiscent of, of uh, the Tom of Finland kind of figures that that were very homoerotic years ago. Um, mm. Did you draw, how did you draw your inspiration for the visuals of the characters themselves? Um, they're very my, stylized, they're very, they're, yeah. You know, they're my style really comes from superhero comics. I mean, they're not like, <laughs> these aren't all like huge muscle. Oh yeah, I would date any of these guys, trust well, me. Well, I mean, they're not like all <laughs> super muscle guys, although some people accuse me of that sometimes, but they're not. No, I even this a chunky guy here is yeah, really cute. <laughs> yeah, I know, there's a variety, I have a variety of bodies, uh -huh. but definitely my style, it comes from, out of the, uh, the DC, the stuff I grew up reading, like right. DC mm -hmm. and Marvel comics, which was really just for me like the best artwork. I would, but I think when I was 12 years old, I, I started realizing, God, this is so much better because like on TV, the Super Friends were on. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that. It was like, um, well, but the, it, the comic books were so much better drawn. Yeah, well, I just every, every man has a perfect body, and every woman has gravity-defying breasts. Yes. Right. Yeah. I guess. I envy those. <laughs> yeah. Go I mean, out and buy some. I don't know if that was really my <laughs> why I wanted to do it, but it was like, <laughs> it is a good observation. <laughs> now, what, what's also kind of cool about uh, Kyle's Bed and Breakfast is, is that, like, like you said, the the references that they're jumping off of really are like sort of like ma uh, very mainstream, and like they're they almost seem like. Like the Archies, they're they're that kind of thing. They're not necessarily yeah. superhero comic books. Have you ever been inspired to turn this sort of into or, or parry it into like a superhero genre? Um, not really. I mean, I there is this sort of supernatural character that shows up around Christmas. This angel character who is from another comic strip I used to do. But I try to keep it real, real world. I mean, this to me is mm -hmm. like um, I don't know what TV show I could compare it to. But it, once I, if you start bringing in sci-fi type elements and superheroes, it just changes the whole. Feel. Vibe of the whole yeah. the dynamics. For me, this is very much down to earth, realistic. Um, like the with Sunday humor, funnies. though. It's, I mean, mm -hmm. and it's not. Some people are like, oh, it's soap opera, and I'm like, it's not really a it's, soap there's opera. There's an element that because I it, mean, things thread from one to another. Yeah, and there that is that element. But soap operas aren't really funny. There's not the humor, and I mm. definitely try to make it funny and dramatic. I mean, there's some episodes that are very serious, and then some are kind of just really. Funny and well, they're crazy. very easy on the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And it's in color. Actually, these this takes up where the. I mean, this next book is going to take up where the color episodes start. Oh, Because I did it in black and white, 
for a number of years, and then um, I started doing it in color about two years ago. So now it's all color, so it's even more exciting. So if you go to the website, mm -hmm. you can see the new episodes. The website is? Uh, KyleComics.com, K-Y-L-E-C-O-M-I-C-S.com. Right? It's on Facebook, too, which has a large Facebook following there. So just mm -hmm. look Kyle's Bed and Breakfast by Greg Fox. Um, look for that on Facebook, and you can find it there and follow it and like it. And Have you considered it? <laughs> um, pushing, in, pushing it into animation? Mm. Um, I've actually watched this. had several talks with um, people about doing live action, like actual mm -hmm. movie um, friend version, which I, I would love to do. Animation, possibly, but I'm not really, that's like a different form for me, mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm not as familiar with it. Um, whereas I really write this like a TV show to me. It's like an ongoing thing, so I think it would um, translate very easily into either TV or a movie version. Mm -hmm. even, so. I've been, it's kind of difficult because everybody who wants to do it is in LA. So it's always like, <laughs> it's so um, convoluted going through the whole creative process with someone who's on the other side of the country. I mean, I've, I've had for two different producers for like a year each, I worked with them trying to get something off the ground and it was so distracting because I'm trying to do this comic strip and it's just, we're like doing ideas. I'm, everything is on the phone, you know, and it's just become through email and it's. Well, I'm, I'm sure the importance of the fact that you're also creating comic books that people can identify with a lot of these characters. I mean, there's a generation of kids out there that mm. this is extremely valuable to them because all of a sudden now you're giving them a whole bunch of characters that oh, they can I identify know. with. Yeah, it's wonderful to have so many people write to me. I mean, not so much, I mean, I get a lot of people in this area, right? but a lot of people read this in um, places like Alabama or Mississippi mm -hmm. or something where they just have no gay culture around them, no gay right. friends. I mean, no while you do inject some models. sensuality, it's mm -hmm. not... Yeah, it sexual. is. It's, I call it PG-13. It's mm. not like um, there's no frontal nudity. There's no even profanity, really. Yeah, it's I know. I've been looking. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but it's, when, it's when, still when, is, it's kind of sexy. When, I mean, when I was of age, the only gay-oriented comics were a lot not here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And this and is actually something it's, that it's sensual, added. but it's not overly yeah, sexual. Yeah. I, I it's you know, it's a fine line. I don't go over that line just because. Well, for. One reason is the publications that run it, or some of them are kind of strict. Because I mean, it runs in places like Salt Lake City mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. one of the publications that run it. Um, they'll have, um, sent, I can't, what is the word? regulations of what you can mm -hmm. show right. or not? So guidelines. Like, guidelines, <laughs> yeah. So I have it reminds me a lot of Love and Rockets, that sort of feel, and, and that the pop and, and yeah, that was well, a very popular you. comic you. book, if, you know, for many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's sort of like the feel I get whenever when, when I'm thumbing through your the pages. You know, oh, you thank know, you. Story. That's that's nice to hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of that. And God, so many comics. I know some people have asked me like, who are you inspired by? And mm -hmm. it's just there's so many different. I couldn't even. I'd have to, you know, truck in uh, like a <laughs> <laughs> whole comic book rack to show you all the people that I really mm -hmm. am inspired by. It's mm -hmm. a great. It's a great medium. You know, well, to, to explore. It's really wonderful art and entertainment. Well, yeah, thank you. So Thanks. The, the second book is The Second Bowl of Cereal. The Second Bowl of Cereal. <laughs> C-R-I-A-L. Yeah. Uh, Play on words. <laughs> and the website again? Uh, KyleComics.com. K-Y-L-E-C-O-M-I-C-S.com. And it's also on Facebook. So, so mm -hmm. and definitely pick up the book. It's available at your finer booksellers as well as numerous online venues. Yes. Uh, is it available in digital form as well? Uh, not yet, but I'm working on that. There probably is going to be a Kindle version, but we right. don't have digital Velma download coming graphics. soon. <laughs> What's that? Digital download coming soon. Well, yep, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much for oh, taking the time you. to come and visit thank us. You. Thank and you for having me. Definitely, definitely check out the book.